Hey everybody, Jason here again with gd &T Basics on today's video question line. Today's topic is on maximum material condition and maximum material boundary. Uh, so the question was, how do you know when to use the MMC and the MMB modifiers? So let's take a look at an example drawing here. We see here on the simple part that we're using the MMB modifier in both the datums B and C, and we're also using the MMC modifier for the feature of size itself. And that's kind of a crucial thing to point out here is that we can only use these modifiers on features of size. So you'll notice that we can apply the MMC modifier because we're applying it to the position of a feature of size. This feature has an element of size to it. And therefore what we're saying is you get bonus tolerance when this feature measures away from the MMC. So if we measure at 9.9, .9, that is the MMC condition, since this is an internal feature, uh, we don't get any bonus tolerance. We only get 0 0.05 millimeters of tolerance diametrically. But if we measure at 10.1 millimeters in size, we now measure away from MMC, right? We're a larger diameter. We're still in our size tolerance, but we've grown that diameter. We've increased the clearance between the mating part. And so now we can allow more position air to happen. And in fact, we would get an additional bonus of 0.2. So we could add that 0.2 to the original 0 0.05 and get a total tolerance for this one part that had this measurement on this feature only of a position tolerance of 0 0.25. So that's how the MMC modifier is used. And it should be used on almost anything that is a feature of size being controlled with position. Um, we can control all sorts of things, but with features of size, when they grow in diameter, when they're internal, what we're doing is increasing clearance. And if the part that's mating inside of this feature here, the part that's mating inside this hole is not press fit or reliant on the size, um, then we can go ahead and use that max material condition modifier because that's how the part functions. If this hole gets bigger in size, we can allow more position air because we've increased the clearance. And we're not saying you can get larger than any size tolerance already there. It's just on the upper end. So let's go ahead and give it more position air. So the MMC modifier to recap should be used on a vast majority of things, almost everything, any feature of size that has a mating feature to it that uh, has a clearance to it, right? Um, that's how the part functions. Now for the MMB, it's very similar, but the MMB gives us datum shift. Uh, we teach that in our classes that you get datum shift when this MMB modifier is being applied. And what that means is datum B is a feature of size itself. And so if we have some sort of shaft that runs through this hole, uh, and this hole comes in at the larger diameter, right? The LMC condition, the largest diameter since it's internal, uh, we have a little extra of position to work with, right? That means that when we simulate this datum, we can simulate it at its MMB boundary of that datum feature. And so we can simulate it because that's how the part functions. So that means we can put this part on a theoretical gauge, physical or digital if you're using a CMM, and now this part can rattle around on top of that pin and we can shift it up to make sure that these holes that reference datum feature B at the MMB, uh, we can shift it to get them in tolerance because that's how the part's going to function. Imagine if we had to set this part in its final assembly and there's two studs here and one larger shaft in the middle, well, if there's a little bit of air on both of these holes, but this thing is dead on and this diameter is a little large, we can shift this part up to account for any more air that happened on these holes. And so for the reasons to use MMB would be very similar in the reasons we would use MMC. If the mating feature on datum feature B is not a pressed fit shaft or there is some level of clearance by design, and if there's more clearance, if the diameter grows, uh, if the diameter of our datum feature grows and we get more clearance, we're going to allow more datum shift on that datum feature because, because that's how the part functions, right? So hopefully that adds a little bit of clarity to the uh, use cases for MMC and MMB. Um, they should be used a lot more than we usually see them. But again, we can only apply these modifiers to feature of size. You'll notice we don't have it on datum feature A because datum feature A is this planar surface here there's no element of size to it. So we can no longer uh, modify it in a way to benefit its size. 
So hopefully that helps answer the question here. Thanks for tuning in. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.